There's an ongoing debate among 3D modelers about whether 3D meshes should be constructed exclusively with quads or if triangles and ingons can also be used. In this video, I'm going to show you some things that may surprise you. It's been said that if you're going to use a subdivision surface modifier, then your mesh needs to be made of all quads. That's what we'll be exploring in this video. I'll also explain how the subdivision surface modifier accomplishes its smoothing. With this information in hand, we'll then tackle some problems that might otherwise seem quite challenging. Let me start with a few quick definitions. A vertex is a single point. Two vertices form an edge. Three vertices form a triangle, which is also a face. You cannot make a face without at least three vertices, and three vertices always form a flat face. Four vertices, which also have four edges, I'll be referring to as a quad. A quad may or may not be a flat face. Five or more vertices make what I'll be referring to as an n-gon. An n-gon forms a face that may or may not be flat. And the last definition is a pole. Poles are less than or more than four edges connected to a single vertex. This simple cylinder shape is what we'll look at first. By the way, I've set the display to material preview. We'll start with this cylinder which has no top or bottom. It has a subdivision surface modifier with the level set to 3 and shade smooth is selected. We need to add a cap to the cylinder. So I'll tab into edit mode, switch to edge select mode, and alt click an edge to select the ring of edges. Then from the face menu I'll select grid fill. We now have a mesh that's using all quads. If I hide overlays to get a better look, you'll notice that the cylinder is distorted. If you're an experienced modeler, you'll immediately see the problem. But for those that are new to Blender, you may be surprised that it's distorted, even though we're using all quads. I'll show overlays again. Next, let's assign another material to the grid. Now it looks even stranger. Some may suggest adding an edge loop near the top to fix things. I'll switch to top view. This still isn't even. You can see the four corners of the grid, and the red is thicker here than it is here. So how about adding edge loops to the top and pull them out near the edge? Looking at it from the top, it's better, but you can still see the corners, and the red sides are still thicker in some places. Looking at it from the side, there are some creases at the four corners of the grid. Now let's try another approach. This time I'll select the outside ring and press F to add a single face, which will give us an n-gon. The n-gon also produced poor results that resulted in ripples, but I'll tell you something that may surprise you. The subdivision surface modifier converted our entire mesh into quads. To see the mesh that the modifier created, I'll switch to wireframe view and deselect optimal display. I'll also hide overlays. This is the mesh that the subdivision surface modifier created. I'll reduce the number of levels to simplify it. You can see that it's all quads. All of these top faces have four sides. Now let's do an experiment. I'll switch to a simple subdivision surface modifier, tab into object mode, and then apply it. Now back in edit mode, we have a mesh with all quads. Each of these top faces have four edges, and the top is flat. There are no n-gons in the mesh, so let's add a subdivision surface modifier to this. Now the ripples are back. So what happened? Our mesh used all quads, but we still have poor results, so our problem is not the lack of quads. I'll press Ctrl Z a few times to go back just before we applied the modifier. If you look at the original mesh, you'll notice that we have a pole with 32 edges connected to it. These edges, which are connected to the pole, form a choppy edge. So is this pole the problem? Well, yes and no. We defined a pole as a vertex with less than or more than four edges connected to it. 
but a vertex with exactly four edges also behaves the same way. If we look at this cube, these edges which are connected to the vertex also form a choppy edge. It's just that it's beneficial in this case since it helps to round out the cube. Our root problem with all of these examples isn't that our mesh is not made of all quads. Our problem is that we don't have clean geometry and edge flow around this top edge. If I press I and inset this top face, and then repeat this one more time, then we get clean geometry around the top edge and the ripples are gone. So we did two things when we inset this face two times. We not only cleaned up the edge geometry, but we isolated the non-clean geometry that the modifier creates to a completely flat space and surrounded it with clean geometry. I'll select the whole top face and assign a different material to it. I'll also add an edge loop near the top. This looks very good. Here is the view from the top. This also looks good, and the red edge is uniform. At this point, if you wanted to, you could delete this face and add a grid fill. In both cases, it looks very good. So what we've seen is that using all quads does not guarantee a good result when using the subdivision surface modifier. What you want is clean geometry where it needs to be. Here we used all quads, but the geometry is definitely not clean around this top edge. If we do have geometry that is not clean, then it should be isolated to a flat surface and it should be surrounded by clean geometry. Now let's take a closer look at the subdivision surface modifier. If you understand how it accomplishes its smoothing, it can help you avoid problems even when you're using all quads. It can also help you fix problems when you run into them. So I'm going to give you a quick explanation about how the subdivision modifier works. Then using this information, I'll show you how you can easily solve some problems that may have previously seemed very difficult or even impossible to solve. Blender, as well as a lot of other software, uses the catmull clark algorithm for the subdivision surface modifier. This modifier will smooth out your mesh and convert your entire mesh into quads. Let's first look at how it converts your mesh to all quads. The subdivision surface modifier has a selection for catmull clark and another one for simple. The simple selection converts your mesh to all quads, but it doesn't smooth the mesh. So I'll start with this so that you can see how the mesh is converted to quads. Let's look at a triangle face. If you switch to wireframe view and disable optimal display, you can see the mesh that the modifier is creating. I currently have the number of viewport levels set to zero, which essentially disables the modifier. If I increase it to one, then one iteration of the subdivision surface modifier will be performed. What happened is that a new vertex was added to the middle of the face. The position of this new vertex is simply the average of the corner vertices. This is important as you'll see later. Also, a new vertex was added to each edge around the face. In addition, new edges were added between the new middle vertex and each edge. The result is that now you have all quads. It doesn't matter how many edges your face start with. This method will always result in all quads. This triangle now has three quads. This quad now has four quads. This 10-sided n-gon now has 10 quads. If I set the levels to 2, then another iteration is performed. So a new vertex is added to each face. A new vertex is added to each edge. And new edges are added between the middle of each face and each edge. If I switch to Catmull Clark, the vertices are now moved to smooth out the mesh. The new location of each vertex is based on a formula that uses the location of nearby vertices. I'll extrude this two times to make it three-dimensional. Now you can see the effect of moving a single vertex. When I move this, the other vertices that are close also move, but the vertices that are separated by a lot of geometry do not move. If I don't want this geometry to move, when this vertex is moved, all I need to do is add more geometry in between.
Now let's take this information and put it to some practical use. Here we have a cube. We're using a subdivision surface modifier with the level set to 4. I'll add a loop cut near the top and bottom to sharpen the edges. Now I'll select this corner edge and move it in. When I move it far enough, you'll see this top edge start to fold over. To investigate what's happening, let's switch to wireframe view and disable optimal display. Now we can see the mesh that the subdivision surface modifier created. Next, let's decrease the number of levels to 1 to simplify it. Sometimes it helps to switch to simple to simplify things even further. Here we can see the face that's causing the problem. I'll select this face to highlight it. If you recall, when the subdivision surface modifier adds a new vertex to each face, the position is the average of the corner vertices. Due to the shape of this quad, the average of the corner vertices is right here, which is outside the boundaries of the face. If I move this edge back out, this vertex is within the boundaries of the face. Now that we know the problem, the solution is very simple. We just need to divide this face. I'll do that from the Face menu by selecting Triangulate Faces. Now instead of one quad, we have two triangles. These are the new vertex points for each triangle, which are well within the face boundaries. By the way, whenever you have a triangle face, the average of the corners will always be within the boundaries of the face. So now I'll switch back to the Cat Mall Clark option and set the level back to 4. This is our new mesh. I'll switch to Solid View. This looks nice. The folding on the top is gone, and so I'll triangulate this face on the bottom as well. Now let's look at another example. Here we're going to use a Boolean modifier to cut a sphere shape into this box. But before doing that, I'll bevel the edges of the box so that it will retain its basic shape when we later use a subdivision surface modifier with it. Now I'll position the sphere. Then I'll select the cube and add a Boolean modifier. I'll use the eyedropper tool to select the sphere as the cutter. Then I'll apply the modifier and hide the sphere. Now we have a nice cutout in the cube. If I switch to edit mode, you'll see that there are two faces on top. Next, let's add a subdivision surface modifier. I'll set the level to 3, tab into object mode, right click to select shade smooth, and then tab back into edit mode. As you can see, we no longer have a clean cutout. So like before, let's switch to wireframe view and disable optimal display. Now we can see the mesh that the subdivision surface modifier created. Next, let's decrease the number of levels to 1 to simplify it. I'll also switch to Simple to simplify things even further. This is a similar problem to our previous example. The subdivision surface modifier added a vertex outside the boundaries of this face. For this face, it's hard to see, but there may be some edges overlapping our cutout. So let's add more geometry to both of these faces. To do that, I'll select both faces, and just like before, from the Face menu, I'll select Triangulate Faces. The cutout area looks much better. So I'll switch back to Catmull Clark and set the levels to 3. When I switch to Solid View, we can see that the original problem has been solved, but now we have some ripples. If I switch the lighting to Map Cap and select this red material, we can see the imperfections better. So just like we did with the cylinder at the beginning of this video, let's clean up some edges and isolate these triangles to a flat surface. So I'll inset twice. Now if you look here, you'll notice another problem that happened when I inset these faces. So I'll switch to wireframe view to take a look at the subdivision surface modifier mesh. This oval shape looks like the box does not have enough geometry. So to test that idea, I'll add a loop cut here. When I drag it, you can see that this area has a fold in the geometry that corrects itself when I move it far enough to the right. So I'll drag it over here. I'll add another loop cut and drag it to the left. 
I'll also add a couple of loop cuts to the end to even up the corners. Now if I tab into object mode and switch to solid view, everything looks great. So there you have it. You don't need to use all quads to get some amazing results when using the subdivision surface modifier. And understanding how the modifier works can help you solve some tricky problems. That being said, there are, however, some good reasons to create your mesh with all quads. If your mesh is meant to be animated and it will deform, then it is a good idea to use all quads. Just remember that you also need clean geometry. If your model is headed down the pipeline for texturing, rigging, or animating, then you need to meet whatever requirements are appropriate. Many times that means all quads. If your model will be exported to other software, then you need to make sure your mesh is compatible with the other software. Other software can use your Blender mesh for things like game development, animation, and 3D printing. Some software may only accept quads. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something. Thanks for watching and please subscribe and leave a comment.